Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop for the second part in this uh, little two-part series of making axle shafts. Uh, again, we're making axle shafts for a 6x6 uh, little amphibious vehicle called the Prairie Bobcat. Um, they've been out of production for almost 50 years, so you just can't get parts for them. Uh, last time what we did was we cut the axle shafts to length. Uh, we cut the plates that were going to be welded on. We drilled them, uh, took the corners off to make it easier on the lathe when we installed it on the lathe to cut them. Uh, and we tack welded the plates to the shafts. Hope you enjoy it. I might just try to get a couple arc shots here just because they're cool. And uh, what I have is I have the garage door open a little bit for some ventilation. I'm trying to get this uh, table as illuminated as I can. Um, again, we'll see what we can do, but hopefully get some good footage for you anyway. Uh, what I need to do is I'm going to start by welding all the, uh, uh, all the support plates to the shafts using a 7014 rod. I mean, I know some people will be using 7018. I like 7014. Um, but yeah, we're going to use 7014 rod and uh, about 125 amps, eighth inch thick rod. Here it goes. Here we go. You know, for not being a particularly gifted welder and uh, not having a not having a turntable or a positioner, that'll be acceptable. Yep. So that's what we're going to do for all six of the shafts to weld the support plate to the to the uh, shaft. Now, as far as the top here, that's not going to be as hard. I just have to lay a bead around it. For that, I think I'm going to turn down to about 115. And just work around. like that. The extra material on the top here will be turned down, so it's not a big deal. Looking at the way the original one was manufactured, it kind of looks like it was done that way to begin with for the original. Not bad at all. I like how that's coming along. So what we'll do is pull this out. So change the light here. All right, so there are the two, those two beads. I still have to do the one up in this, I still have to do the one up in this corner here, but we'll wait till after. I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit first. We're gonna get onto the other shafts and then we'll do the, the one on the bottom. Well, I had to take a break there for a few minutes because little man woke up and so I had to go deal with him. Uh, he's uh, taken care of now and in good hands. What I've done is I have a piece of uh, scrap metal here that actually has a V-groove machined into it. Um, it's got a narrow bottom, so I have it clamped to another block, which is clamped to the table. And this way I can use one hand and turn it within the block. It'll also ground all the way along, so that should be fairly decent. And so now I should be able to, so get myself comfortable here, should be able to get in here and weld from back here. Hopefully we can get you, hopefully we can get at least a decent uh, a decent shot at one point here. So anyway, here we go. There we are. You know, for a guy who doesn't claim to here, yeah. You know, for a guy who doesn't really claim to be an expert welder, well, you know, I don't have any sort of uh, 
rotary table for this sort of stuff. I don't think that's that bad. It'll certainly hold for the application it needs to do. I'm going to do the other five here. Um, there's no point in you watching me do five, so I'll finish them up and I'll bring you back in after. Well, one thing that's kind of cool is, uh, turns out I don't have to put the four jaw in. So after putting it in the chuck here, the three jaw of all things, I spin it around and I'm watching the dial and I have maybe a thou and a half reading on the dial. So I think I'm going to go with that. So first off, what we need to do is we're going to clean up this end. It's pretty much face to length. I'm just going to take just a skim off to clean up the slag. We'll center drill it and then support this end so we can start cutting our diameters. All right, so it's just starting to skim the end. There we go. Now this is going to be an interrupted cut, so I'm going to start slow and see where it goes from there. Uh, this diameter here has to be taken down to two and a half inches. This diameter here has to go to two inch uh, seven eighths. Yeah, we all know how much carbide loves interrupted cuts. So, as you can see, it's, it's coming. Just some of the corners are a little higher than others in relation to the center line. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll knock the corners off of uh, both of them, bring them down to at least circular, and then uh, I'll bring you back in at that point. All right, we got them roughly, or well, pretty much circular. You look all the way around, we got the uh, octagon taken away. They're, you know, discs now. <coughs> I'm going to take a different insert holder because that one there, the one I was using for the interrupted cuts, it's getting beaten up. I want to make a reasonably decent surface finish on this part. So now, starting with this one on the back, so now starting with this one here, we need 2 inch 875. We have uh, 2 inch 910. So about 35 thousandths off of there. Got to hand these sleeves on this coveralls. Yeah. Yeah, we're within about a half thou. We're half thou under. Considering where it's going, this will work just fine. Now this side here has to be taken down to 2.5 or well, two and a half. We got a ways to go here. Right now we're sitting at 2, 2 inch 907, 407 thousandths to come off. Oh. Yeah, 2 inch 501, good enough. Right. Yep, I will consider that acceptable. Okay, next step is we're going to have to um, face the front here and make a one inch shoulder out of what's left in that weld. Lock off some of the welding slag. We are at 1 inch 147. All right, well, I can see where I have a little bit of a, a few little voids there from the welds, but that's not going to affect the strength of it at all. Not for what it needs to do. There we go, that will work. Just a little bit. Let's take the sharp edges off of it. Now on the original, you can actually see uh, 
bits and pieces missing from the end flange just were um, just from welding little lumps and stuff it wasn't completely smooth on that either so no it's not perfect but it will work well I found out afterward that the first time I did uh, the holes on the flange here I didn't have the microphone on so I'm, I'm gonna do it again on this axle here so that you can see how I do it um, what I do is take the uh, post here I loosen off both the post uh, clamp bolt and the dovetail so it can slide easily we're gonna bring this over slide that into there bring in the lathe tail stock with a live center in it put some light pressure on it and lock our post lock the dovetail there we go we are now centered to the shaft now the bolt hole circle here is actually 50 millimeters I originally thought it was two inches but it's actually 50 millimeters so <clears throat> half of 15 millimeters when you do the math comes out to about 984 thousandths right there before we go any further we're gonna lock off the tape or the cross slide there well that's locked for the entire hole drilling process I'm going to leave the lathe unplugged that way I can use the key for the chuck as a lever because we're going to put this into a low gear turn it around really low tech way of indexing because I'm only doing it three holes <clears throat> three jaws on the chuck there we are center drill we're going to use that to spot with And here we go. There we go, spotted. Now I suppose anybody who really makes axles for a living would probably be face palming at me right now. But this will work for the application it's needed. There we go. Now, I have found that it works better in drilling up in steps just because of the tool pressure required and it kind of grabs at times otherwise. There we go. We're working our way up to a number or letter G drill, which will give us about a 70% thread, give or take, on a 516-18. Ooh, let's, uh, let's refill our oil here. That one there is going through a little bit more. There we go. There we go. So that was at 730 seconds. Which is next step before our letter G drill make sure we're still indexed there we are now Pierre in case you're watching check it out We'll chamfer before we thread. That ought to make Pierre feel all warm and fuzzy. And then a little bit of threading juice. Put in low range and I'm surprised that it actually works really well like this to power tap. Then remove our scale. Bring it back around. There you go. Just do the same procedure here. Do it again. We have our three holes. So I'm going to finish off the rest of the axles 
and uh, at least now I have something with sound. So I'll bring you back in when we're ready to cut our keyways. And for the runner-up prize on the sketchiest mill setup of the year, well, I'm uh, in the running for that. Let's just put it that way. Um, what I'm trying to do here is uh, I, I have two V-blocks set. I don't really have any V-blocks that are uh, that will index to the slots of the table. So what I wound up doing was I actually got I, I set one of the axles in the blocks, lightly snugged it down, and then took and uh, twitched or took and twitched and adjusted the uh, the clamping blocks that hold the V-blocks in place with the axle snugged in to the point where, so you can see where, where we're at with our needle. And so that's right on the side of the shaft. And if I'm having roughly a half thou deflection over say six inches, I think the, I think the V-blocks are straight enough where they're sitting. On this end, I've got a one, two, three block clamp to the table as a stop. Right, now, before we can cut anything, we have to find the edge of this material. Okay, we've got that zeroed. Okay, so it's zeroed. Center finder here is a half an inch diameter. 250 puts the center of the edge finder right to the edge of the material. Now the material itself is within a thou or so of one inch. So now if we just go one, two, three, four, five, lock our table. That should put us right in the middle, like that. I'm going to touch off, bring it down to the line, set my work stop. This little work stop here. I'm going to go to the other end. We'll set the other work stop and then that way we'll actually have a physical stop against which to, well, stop. That's a 4,000th cut because that's one end. slot right there. A little bit of deburring. I think we're off to the races. Well, I can just get the depth micrometer in there. And you're going to have to believe me. I'm leaning over on this side here, to the right side, as best I can, finding that flat spot, and then rocking it back and forth till it sits nice and flat. We're about 141 thousandths. So, or within a thou. Excellent. I'll then wipe, remove the shaft, wipe down the blocks, and I should be able to put the next shaft in with the end up against the stop. Again, I have five more shafts to do. I'll bring you back in when I'm done. Well, Uncle Tim should be happy. He got, he'll have his uh, six axle shafts. Um, he just, I just had to build a tool to build a tool to make parts. Kind of the vicious circle of the whole ho home hobby machining thing. So I'm hoping it was interesting for you at least. Uh, with different uh, tasks involved with making these between the machining and welding and prep and such. So if you like what you see, I mean, yeah, come on by anytime. Uh, I'm still making videos just when I can get out here. Um, if you subscribe, great, that'd be awesome. Uh, leave a comment. It's great to hear from different people. I've, I've gotten to hear from people from all over the world. It's been really neat connecting with people. So anyway, for what it's worth, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing if you do. I'll see you in the next video.